panegyric on abraham by soren kierkegaard from fear and trembling published in eighteen forty three translated by lee m hollander in nineteen twenty three this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org panegyric on abraham if a consciousness of the eternal were not implanted in man if the basis of all that exists were but a confusedly fermenting element which convulsed by obscure passions produced all both the great and the insignificant if under everything there lay a bottomless void never to be filled what else were life but despair if it were thus and if there were no sacred bonds between man and man if one generation arose after another as in the forest the leaves of one season succeed the leaves of another or like the songs of birds which are taken up one after another if the generations of man passed through the world like a ship passing through the sea and the wind over the desert a fruitless and vain thing if eternal oblivion were ever greedily watching for its prey and there existed no power strong enough to wrest it from its clutches how empty were life then and how dismal and therefore it is not thus but just as god created man and woman he likewise called into being the hero and the poet or orator the latter cannot perform the deeds of the hero he can only admire and love him and rejoice in him and yet he also is happy and not less so for the hero is as it were his better self with which he has fallen in love and he is glad he is not himself the hero so that his love can express itself in admiration the poet is the genius of memory and does nothing but recall what has been done can do nothing but admire what has been done he adds nothing of his own but he is jealous of what has been entrusted to him he obeys the choice of his own heart but once he has found what he has been seeking he visits every man's door with his song and with his speech so that all may admire the hero as he does and be proud of the hero as he is this is his achievement his humble work this is his faithful service in the house of the hero if thus faithful to his love he battles day and night against the guile of oblivion which wishes to lure the hero from him then has he accomplished his task then is he gathered to his hero who loves him as faithfully for the poet is as it were the hero's better self unsubstantial to be sure like a mere memory but also transfigured as is a memory therefore shall no one be forgotten who has done great deeds and even if there be delay even if the cloud of misunderstanding obscure the hero from our vision still his lover will come some time and the more time has passed the more faithfully will he cleave to him no one shall be forgotten who was great in the world but each hero was great in his own way and each one was eminent in proportion to the great things he loved for he who loved himself became great through himself and he who loved others became great through his devotion but he who loved god became greater than all of these every one of them shall be remembered but each one became great in proportion to his trust one became great by hoping for the possible another by hoping for the eternal but he who hoped for the impossible he became greater than all of these every one shall be remembered but each one was great in proportion to the power with which he strove for he who strove with the world became great by overcoming himself but he who strove with god he became the greatest of them all thus there have been struggles in the world man against man one against a thousand but he who struggles with god he became greatest of them all thus there was fighting on this earth 
and there was he who conquered everything by his strength and there was he who conquered god by his weakness there was he who trusting in himself gained all and there was he who trusting in his strength sacrificed everything but he who believed in god was greater than all of these there was he who was great through his strength and he who was great through his wisdom and he who was great through his hopes and he who was great through his love but abraham was greater than all of these great through the strength whose power is weakness great through the wisdom whose secret is folly great through the hope whose expression is madness great through the love which is hatred of oneself through the urging of his faith abraham left the land of his forefathers and became a stranger in the land of promise he left one thing behind and took one thing along he left his worldly wisdom behind and took with him faith for else he would not have left the land of his fathers but would have thought it an unreasonable demand through his faith he came to be a stranger in the land of promise where there was nothing to remind him of all that had been dear to him but where everything by its newness tempted his soul to longing and yet was he god's chosen he in whom the lord was well pleased indeed had he been one cast off one thrust out of god's mercy then might he have comprehended it but now it seemed like a mockery of him and of his faith there had been others who lived in exile from the fatherland which they loved they are not forgotten nor is a song of lament forgotten in which they mournfully sought and found what they had lost of abraham there exists no song of lamentation it is human to complain it is human to weep with the weeping but it is greater to believe and more blessed to consider him who has faith through his faith abraham received the promise that in his seed were to be blessed all races of mankind time passed there was still the possibility of it and abraham had faith another man there was who also lived in hopes time passed the evening of his life was approaching neither was he poultry enough to have forgotten his hopes neither shall he be forgotten by us then he sorrowed and his sorrow did not deceive him as life had done but gave him all it could for in the sweetness of sorrow he became possessed of his disappointed hopes it is human to sorrow it is human to sorrow with the sorrowing but it is greater to have faith and more blessed to consider him who has faith no song of lamentation has come down to us from abraham he did not sadly count the days as time passed he did not look at sarah with suspicious eyes whether she was becoming old he did not stop the sun's course lest sarah should grow old and his hope with her he did not lull her with his songs of lamentation abraham grew old and sarah became a laughing-stock to the people and yet was he god's chosen and heir to the promise that in his seed were to be blessed all races of mankind were it then not better if he had not been god's chosen for what is it to be god's chosen is it to have denied to one in one's youth all the wishes of youth in order to have them fulfilled after great labor in old age but abraham had faith and steadfastly lived in hope had abraham been less firm in his trust then would he have given up that hope he would have said to god so it is perchance not thy will after all that this shall come to pass i shall surrender my hope it was my only one it was my bliss i am sincere i conceal no secret grudge for that thou didst deny it to me he would not have remained forgotten his example would have saved many a one but he would not have become the father of faith for it is great to surrender one's hope but greater still to abide by it steadfastly after having surrendered it for it is great to seize hold of the eternal hope but greater still to abide steadfastly by one's worldly hopes after having surrendered them 
then came the fullness of time if abraham had not had faith then sarah would probably have died of sorrow and abraham dulled by his grief would not have understood the fulfillment but would have smiled about it as a dream of his youth but abraham had faith and therefore he remained young for he who always hopes for the best him life will deceive and he will grow old and he who is always prepared for the worst he will soon age but he who has faith he will preserve eternal youth praise therefore be to this story for sarah though advanced in age was young enough to wish for the pleasures of a mother and abraham though gray of hair was young enough to wish to become a father in a superficial sense it may be considered miraculous that what they wished for came to pass but in a deeper sense the miracle of faith is to be seen in abraham's and sarah's being young enough to wish and their faith having preserved their wish and therewith their youth the promise he had received was fulfilled and he accepted it in faith and it came to pass according to the promise of his faith whereas moses smote the rock with his staff but believed not there was joy in abraham's house when sarah celebrated the day of her golden wedding but it was not to remain thus for once more was abraham to be tempted he had struggled with that cunning power to which nothing is impossible with that ever watchful enemy who never sleeps with that old man who outlives all he had struggled with time and had preserved his faith and now all the terror of that fight was concentrated in one moment and god tempted abraham saying to him take now thine only son isaac whom thou lovest and get thee to the land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell thee of all was lost then and more terribly than if a son had never been given him the lord had only mocked abraham then miraculously he had realized the unreasonable hopes of abraham and now he wished to take away what he had given a foolish hope it had been but abraham had not laughed when the promise had been made him now all was lost the trusting hope of seventy years the brief joy at the fulfillment of his hopes who then is he that snatches away the old man's staff who that demands that he himself shall break it in two who is he that renders disconsolate the gray hair of old age who is he that demands that he himself shall do it is there no pity for the venerable old man and none for the innocent child and yet was abraham god's chosen one and yet was it the lord that tempted him and now all was to be lost the glorious remembrance of him by a whole race the promise of abraham's seed all that was but a whim a passing fancy of the lord which abraham was now to destroy for ever that glorious treasure as old as the faith in abraham's heart and many many years older than isaac the fruit of abraham's life sanctified by prayers matured in struggles the blessing on the lips of abraham this fruit was now to be plucked before the appointed time and to remain without significance for of what significance were it if isaac was to be sacrificed that sad and yet blessed hour when abraham was to take leave from all that was dear to him the hour when he would once more lift up his venerable head when his face would shine like the countenance of the lord the hour when he would collect his whole soul for a blessing strong enough to render isaac blessed all the days of his life that hour was not to come he was to say farewell to isaac to be sure but in such wise that he himself was to remain behind death was to part them but in such wise that isaac was to die 
the old man was not in happiness to lay his hand on isaac's head when the hour of death came but tired of life to lay violent hands on isaac and it was god who tempted him woe woe to the messenger who would have come before abraham with such a command who would have dared to be the messenger of such dread tidings but it was god that tempted abraham but abraham had faith and had faith for this life indeed had his faith been but concerning the life to come then might he more easily have cast away all in order to hasten out of this world which was not his but abraham had faith and doubted not but trusted that the improbable would come to pass if abraham had doubted then would he have undertaken something else something great and noble for what could abraham have undertaken but was great and noble he would have proceeded to mount moriah he would have cloven the wood and fired it and unsheathed his knife he would have cried out to god despise not this sacrifice it is not indeed the best i have for what is an old man against a child foretold of god but it is the best i can give thee let isaac never know that he must find consolation in his youth he would have plunged the steel in his own breast and he would have been admired throughout the world and his name would not have been forgotten but it is one thing to be admired and another to be a lodestar which guides one troubled in mind but abraham had faith he prayed not for mercy and that he might prevail upon the lord it was only when just retribution was to be visited upon sodom and gomorrah that abraham ventured to beseech him for mercy we read in scripture and god did tempt abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am you whom i am now addressing did you do likewise when you saw the dire dispensations of providence approach threateningly did you not then say to the mountains fall on me and to the hills cover me or if you were stronger in faith did not your step linger along the way longing for the old accustomed paths as it were and when the voice called you did you answer then or not at all and if you did perchance in a low voice or whispering not thus abraham but gladly and cheerfully and trustingly and with a resonant voice he made answer here am i and we read further and abraham rose up early in the morning he made haste as though for some joyous occasion and early in the morning he was in the appointed place on mount moriah he said nothing to sarah nothing to eliezer his steward for who would have understood him did not his temptation by its very nature demand of him the vow of silence he laid the wood in order and bound isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood and abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son my listener many a father there have been who thought that with his child he lost the dearest of all there was in the world for him yet assuredly no child ever was in that sense a pledge of god as was isaac to abraham many a father there has been who lost his child but then it was god the unchangeable and inscrutable will of the almighty and his hand which took it thus not with abraham for him was reserved a more severe trial and isaac's fate was put into abraham's hand together with the knife and there he stood the old man with his only hope yet he did not doubt nor look anxiously to the left or right nor challenge heaven with his prayers he knew it was god the almighty who now put him to the test he knew it was the greatest sacrifice which could be demanded of him but he knew also that no sacrifice was too great which god demanded and he drew forth his knife 
who strengthened abraham's arm who supported his right arm that it drooped not powerless for he who contemplates this scene is unnerved who strengthened abraham's soul so that his eyes grew not too dim to see either isaac or the ram for he who contemplates this scene will be struck with blindness and yet it is rare enough that one is unnerved or is struck with blindness and still more rare that one narrates worthily what there did take place between father and son to be sure we know well enough it was but a trial if abraham had doubted when standing on mount moriah if he had looked about him in perplexity if he had accidentally discovered the ram before drawing the knife if god had permitted him to sacrifice it instead of isaac then would he have returned home and all would have been as before he would have had sarah and he would have kept isaac and yet how different all would have been for then had his return been a flight his salvation an accident his reward disgrace his future perchance perdition then would he have borne witness neither to his faith nor to god's mercy but would have witnessed only to the terror of going to mount moriah then abraham would not have been forgotten nor either mount moriah it would be mentioned then not as is mount ararat on which the ark landed but as a sign of terror because it was there abraham doubted venerable patriarch abraham when you returned home from mount moriah you required no encomiums to console you for what you had lost for indeed you did win all and still kept isaac as we all know and the lord did no more take him from your side but you sat gladly at table with him in your tent as in the life to come you will for all times venerable patriarch abraham thousands of years have passed since those times but still you need no late-born lover to snatch your memory from the power of oblivion for every language remembers you and yet do you reward your lover more gloriously than any one rendering him blessed in your bosom and taking heart and eyes captive by the marvel of your deed venerable patriarch abraham second father of the race you who first perceived and bore witness to that unbounded passion which was but scorn for the terrible fight with the raging elements and the strength of brute creation in order to struggle with god you who first felt that sublimest of all passions you who found the holy pure humble expression for the divine madness which was a marvel to the heathen forgive him who would speak in your praise in case he did it not fittingly he spoke humbly as if it concerned the desire of his heart he spoke briefly as is seemly but he will never forget that you required a hundred years to obtain a son of your old age against all expectations that you had to draw the knife before being permitted to keep isaac he will never forget that in a hundred and thirty years you never got farther than to faith end of panegyric on abraham by soren kierkegaard from fear and trembling published in eighteen forty three translated by lee m hollander in 1923.